Okay, we're now moving on to um, shapes that have got four sides. If I draw two lines, one above the other like so, then what I've done, these lines are equal distance from each other, they are to remind you called parallel. parallel lines. Why, why do we say they're parallel? They're parallel because they are always the same distance apart. And so, of course, if we, if we were to continue these lines on, then they would never meet. They would never touch each other. If we take two parallel lines, like the ones we've got here, and we close off the ends, like so. Let's see. Let's make two parallel lines. There. And there, and we close off the ends. Close off that end, and we close off that end. Then we have a geometric figure. Why do we say the two sides of this box are parallel? Well, we say they are parallel because they are at all points. No matter where we measure them, we measure them here, measure them here, right? There, if we were to drop a perpendicular line down, right? This is a right angle, right? This line here would be the same distance apart as another perpendicular drop down here, or another perpendicular drop down here. So these perpendiculars are all the same distance apart, and so because they're all the same distance apart, we say the lines are parallel. Just to remind you of a bit of Latin, laterus, is a side, right? and the ancient Latin word for sides was lateralia. That means sides, and lateral would mean one side. So if something is equilateral, it is of equal side, equal sides. Quadri means with four. And so we get this word, quadrilateral. A quadrilateral has got four sides. One, two, three, four. It can be any shape. One, two, three, four. Right? One, two, three, four. It makes no difference as long as it has four sides. And note that every quadrilateral has also got four in this case, it's a square, so there are four right angles. In this case here, it's got four angles. One, two, three, four. And here it's got four angles. One, two, three, four. So every, every quadrilateral is also a quadrigon, but we don't use that word. And it's also a quadrangle. And we do use that word, right? You may have heard of a quadrangle before. Right, a quadrangle is something with four angles, and a quadrilateral is the same thing as a quadrangle. So how many sides does a quadrilateral have? And the answer is going to be four. Right? How many sides does a triangle have? And the answer is going to be three. And how many sides does a quadrangle have? And the answer is four sides. And how many angles does it have? Four angles.
some more Greek. Right. This is a line drawn with a pen. And the word for a line drawn with a pen in Greek is gramma. A gramma is a line drawn by a pen. Parallelo means with parallel. Remember, we know what parallel is. Let's do an example. Parallel. Okay. With parallel. So, parallelo means with parallel. And if I make a shape that's with parallel, with a pen, then I get a parallelogram. Right, which is a special kind of quadrangle. Right, the parallelogram has got two parallel sides. Um, let's make this one a bit longer this way, and then this one a bit longer this way. So there are two parallel lines, and we connect them, giving us a figure, because now it's a shape, so it's a geometrical figure. And we have a parallelogram, a geometrical shape that has got two parallel lines, and that has been drawn with a pen, so, or with a pencil. So. Parallelogram. Not hard, right? It's a big word, but just remember that it means with parallel and it's been drawn. That's all. We need some more words, um, a bit more ancient language. So, uni. Uni means with one. For example, an unicycle. A unicycle, right? Yeah, it's a unicycle. It's got one wheel, and there's the man sitting on it. There he is, right? On his unicycle. It's got one wheel, unicycle. By means with two, and suddenly his unicycle turns into a whoop, bicycle, and he's sitting on the handlebars, right? There we have a bicycle, two wheels, uni, one, by, two. Tri we've seen already, which is three, and quadri we've seen already, which is with four. So one, two, three, four, like that. And we're going to be using these words to describe different figures. A quadrilateral, a special kind of quadrilateral, can also have right angles. So let's make one. It's not hard to do. We start off like that. Now, this is supposed to be a corner here. This here right, has got four right angles. Here's one, here's two, three, four. It's got four right angles. It's a quadrilateral because it's got one, two, three, four sides. So it's four with four, quadri, and lateral. So with four sides. Um, and if all of these sides are right angles, then we call it a right angled quadrilateral. Right? A right angled quadrilateral. And that's rather a lot of words. 
So in Latin, we'd call it a rectangulus. Quadrilateralis. Which is the original word for it. Now, this is far too long to write down. Um, mathematicians would go crazy if they wrote this down all the time. So what they did was this. They just shortened it to rectangle, like that. So we just call it a rectangle. Right? And we don't bother writing down that part. Right? We simply call it a right-angled, but we do it using the Latin word, rectangle. And this here is a rectangle because all of the corners are rect. They are all right. right? So it's a rectangle. Just like a triangle, it's got three angles. Um, if we were being logical, which we're not, if we were being logical, we would have a triangle. And we'd have a quadriangle. And in fact, this is a quadriangle, but we don't call it a quadriangle. Right? We don't call it a quadriangle, we call it a rectangle. But remember that we do have the word quadrangle. And a quadrangle is indeed this word here. But we don't use it very much. You will find rectangle used much more frequently than quadrangle in mathematics textbooks. Although triangle and quadrangle is logical, triangle to rectangle is less logical. Let's move on. Right, we've already seen an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle is one where all the sides are the same length. So let's draw one here. This is an approximation of an equilateral triangle. And to show you that I mean it to be equilateral, even though it's not if I were to measure it, I put an equal sign here, equal sign here, equal sign here, to show you that I mean it to be that these are actually the same length. This is our equilateral triangle. And we can also make an equilateral parallelogram. Now, an equilateral parallelogram is going to be interesting because all the sides will be the same length. So let's go 5. Now, it's a parallelogram, remember. So these two sides are parallel, but they're five apart. So let's measure down five, and let's measure down five, and make our line. And these sides are also five. So each side is the same length. Each side is 5, 5, 5, 5, and 5. So the sides are all the same length. It's also a quadrangle or rectangle. And these are all right angles. And we have a special name for this shape, where all the sides are the same length. This is equal to that, which is equal to that, is equal to that. Right? This is a rectangular equilateral quadrangle. Right, it's rectangular, it's equilateral, all sides the same length, and it's a quadrangle. It's not a triangle, it's a quadrangle. And we call it a square. Right? Right, the next thing we need to do to understand a bit more geometry is to draw a fish. Yeah, here we go. It's a special fish, right? And it looks a little bit like this. There we have this fish. 
looks like this. It's got a tail, like that. And it's got two eyes, and they're both on the same side of its head. Looks like that. So this fish, hmm, let's draw another one. All right, let's draw him a bit more geometrically. Two eyes, there, he's got his, there he is. This is a special kind of fish, and the Greeks gave it a name, and this fish was called a rhombus. Right, in English we'd call it a flounder or a sole, and they were very nice, fried in butter. Um, it's a rhombus, a rhombus fish. Now, there was a shape which looked like this fish. And that's why we call it a rhombus, we should name it after the fish. It's a parallelogram, but it's a parallelogram where the angles are not rectangular. In other words, they're not at 90 degrees. So we have the angles, which are parallel, at least two of them are, right? So it's two parallel angles. There we are. All right, these two are supposed to be the same length, so we'll make them equilateral, like so. That's supposed to be the same length. And that is supposed to be the same length. Now, what I can do, let's make it more obvious, let's shift these across. Right, they're the same length. And we connect them with two lines here that are the same length. Oops. Right, these are all supposed to be the same length lines. So, they are still equilateral, they have the same length sides, but they are not rectangular. They don't have right angles. So when it's wonky, like this, this is wonky. When it's wonky like this, and it looks like a rhombus fish, right? There are its eyes and its gills. And it's, right, it looks like a rhombus fish. There we are, okay. Rhombus fish, fisherman, right? There it is. He's got his line and his hook. Right, it's caught the rhombus fish. So, here's our fisherman catching a rhombus fish. So it has parallel lines for the sides. It does not have right angles. Now, if you did have a room like this, it would be quite tricky to put your furniture in the corners because there are no right angles. In this particular kind of shape, the angles on opposite sides are equal. So these angles are equal and these angles are equal. So this angle here is equal to this angle here and this angle here is equal to this angle here. And this is a rhombus. I want you to, in your books, draw a rhombus fish and to draw a rhombus. Right, these Greeks were very imaginative and the next kind of shape is named after a table, a special kind of table. This table was called a trapezion. And the trapezion was a table that looked like this. The top of the table had two parallel lines. One of them was short and the other was longer, like that. A special kind of table. And the tabletop looked like this. So it wasn't your normal standard dining room table. 
It was a trapezion. Right, nice trapezion. There it is. And we can put a vase of flowers onto it. Hmm. There we are. There's our flower vase on the trapezion. And uh, we can stick some flowers into it. Right. There's our trapezion. Nice, no? Um, now, in geometry, if we have a shape that looks like this fancy table, which the ancient Greeks had, this trapezion table, then we call it a trapezoid, which is, means like a trapezion. So a shape that looks like this kind of table is a trapezoid. And in a trapezoid, only two sides of it are parallel. So one side is parallel and the other side is parallel. Okay. There are only two parallel sides. The other two sides are not. Here they are converging towards the right. On this example, they're converging towards the right. right. We can make another one with them converging towards the left. Now, which sides here are parallel? Well, if we were to drop a perpendicular down, right, here and here and here, we'd find that these perpendiculars are all the same length, proving that this side and this side are parallel. If we were to drop a perpendiculars down the other way, so I drop a perpendicular down here, firstly it would we'd have to imagine it would go off like this direction. Okay. But if we were to put perpendiculars that are parallel to here, so we drop off a perpendicular from this perpendicular, here it goes. Right? They're not the same length. Okay? These three perpendiculars which I've drawn, which are perpendicular to the cross lines here, and they're parallel to these lines at the sides, are all different lengths. So this line here and this line here are not parallel because these lines are not the same length. But these two lines, this one and this one, are parallel because these lines here are the same length. And that's a trapezoid. Just to remind you something we learned earlier on. What is a vertex? Do you remember what a vertex is? Right, circle the vertex. It's here, right, the summit. So we have one vertex. And we have two vertices. and three vertices, and so on. Dia is a Greek word, and it means a cross, going from one side to the other. And gon, we've done before, and this is angle. So diagon means across the angle. Let's put this word here. Dia diagon means across the angle. So a diagonal line goes across from one angle to the other. So if we put, let's show you how this works. Let's make a quadrilateral. Here's a quadrilateral. It has four sides, so it's a quadrilateral, because it is with four sides. Right? It's also now dia gone. Dia means through, 
and gone means angle. Now I want to draw a line that goes through from angle to angle. Well, I can. we have four of them, they are the sides, so I don't want one of those. Right, we already have those already. This one goes from an angle to an angle, that one goes from an angle to an angle. So these are technically diagonals, but that's not what we want. We want to show one that goes across from, because it's got to go across, and that means across the whole shape. And this is going to go across the whole figure, from one side of it to the other. And this is the diagonal line. Through the angle. So a diagonal line goes from one angle to the other across the whole figure. That's why these lines, which also go from angle to angle, are not diagonals, because they don't cross the whole figure. They just go along the sides of it. The diagonal crosses the whole figure across the angle. So, as I said, this here is not a diagonal, right? You cannot have the vertices of a diagonal on the same sides of the shape. They must be on opposite sides. Draw a rectangle or a quadrilateral and draw the diagonal and label it. Right, draw a parallelogram and then draw a diagonal in the parallelogram. So, for example, here's a parallelogram. Copy this into your book. And then you have a choice of diagonals. So you can one this way or one that way. It makes no difference. I'm going to do it in a different color. Here's our diagonal through the angles of the figure. There it is, diagonal. Right? Draw a variety of parallelograms and put diagonals in them. Okay? at least four of them. Right, I'm just going to do one more for you. But I want you to draw another four. Try to do a rhombus, try to do a square, try to do a rectangle, and then put the diagonal line, the one that goes from angle to angle, in. There it is. Now, I'm going to draw a right angle. Here it is. Here's a right angle. Draw a tiny box in the vertex. And this is a sign telling us it's a right angle. So do that. Get your set square, draw this angle, and put a box in the vertex. Now, I want you to do something. I want you to stretch a line out. Here's a leg, and here's another leg. Okay, let's put him this way. We can imagine a little ma imaginary person with very long legs. He's got a hat on, right? There he is, and he's got really long legs. Now, what I want you to do is imagine a rope stretched across from the bottom of one foot leg across the other. Now, the Greek word herpo, herpo means below. Right? And what we're going to do here is we're going to stretch a line across. And this um, is a line that's stretched across 
which in Greek is called hypotenuse. It's a line that's stretched across when we have a right angle. So let's do it. We've stretched a line across opposite to the right angle. Okay. If you're standing, this line is actually the ground. And we stretch a line across, this is called the hypotenuse. Now this line, the special word for this line, it only exists when we have a right angle. Okay, so you can only have a hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle. You can only have it if there's a right angle. And it's called the hypotenuse. The line that is stretched across from foot to foot. There are his feet. And there are his feet. Mm -hmm. Right? Twiddling his toes. Right? From foot to foot of the leg, opposite the right angle. Want to draw some right angles and do them in different different uh, orientations. That means different directions. So draw some right angles that are going in different ways. Right? Draw a variety of right angles. Mark them all with, with a little square so you know it's a right angle. Right. So draw a variety of right angles like that in your book. Mark them all with the little marker that's a right angle. And then place the hypotenuse at the bottom of the legs, stretching the imaginary rope across from foot to foot. Right, let's see. And then we have right angled triangles. So right angled triangles with the hypotenuse. And that's the end of our triangle section. The next section will be about circles.